hands-on with the $329 2017 iPad. How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. I have in my hands right here the 2017 iPad. I'm going to unbox it right now and also answer the question that everyone wants to know. Is a $329 iPad worth it? So let's crack open the knife and do some plastic surgery. Peel off the wrapper, flip it around, and take the top off. And here we go folks, this is the 2017 iPad. If you've ever unboxed an iPad before, you know exactly what to expect. Of course, the iPad is on top in its plastic wrapping, and then below that you have the usual suspects. So you have the information packet here, it says on the front, designed by Apple in California. So inside that you have a welcome to iPad card, you have some safety and regulatory information, and there you go folks, this is what you've been waiting for, the Apple stickers. All right, so let's talk about the other items inside the box, including the lightning cable, which is right here. So you have a USB to lightning cable. This allows you to connect to the power adapter or to your computer for syncing via iTunes. Set that aside for now. And you have the 12 watt power adapter included inside. So this little guy will allow you to charge your iPad at full speed. All right, so now let's get to the exciting part, shall we? This is the fifth generation 2017 iPad. And I say fifth generation because Apple doesn't seem to consider the iPad Air series as a part of the natural iPad line. So this is the fifth edition. You had the original iPad, you had the iPad 2, you had the iPad 3, the 4, and this right here, folks, is what Apple considers to be the iPad 5 or the fifth generation iPad. They don't actually call it that in press materials, but if you look at the fine print, they refer to it as the fifth generation on their website. So 9.7 inch retina display. Of course, it comes in three colors. You have silver, space gray, and gold. Starts off at $329 for 32 gigabytes of storage. Now let's talk about features. You have a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera that shoots 720p next to the ambient light sensor. You have the first generation touch ID sensor embedded into the home button which is awesome. You have volume up and down buttons, no dedicated mute or rotation lock switch. You have a sleep button up top, and you have the eight megapixel eyesight camera that shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second. You have a pair of microphones, one on the back and one up top, along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And you have a pair of stereo speakers that flank the left and the right side of the lightning connector, which is used for charging. On the rear of the iPad, you have the Apple logo, of course, that is reflective. And below that, you have the iPad text along with FCC information and the serial number. So I gave you the grand hardware tour. Now let's fire up the iPad and see how it actually performs in action. Now I do understand that you may have some lingering hardware questions like, how fast is the processor? How much memory is in this thing? We're gonna discuss all that here right now. So let's fire up Geekbench and get started. So here are the Geekbench results for the 2017 iPad and it's pretty impressive. You get two gigabytes of RAM, 2381 for the single core score, 4103 for the multi-core score, that 2381 bests the A8X chip inside the iPad Air 2, and it comes within, as you can see, striking distance of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Yes, so that dual core A9 chip inside of the 2017 iPad is no slouch. It's serious. In fact, I can edit and scrub the timeline on a 4K video smoothly with an iMovie on this $329 tablet. But not just that, I can actually export this video in full 4K resolution. And speed wise, you're going to see that it goes toe to toe with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So I'm going to choose 4K here. Now I'm going to speed up this export just to get through it. But you can see they're both neck and neck. And the 12.9 inch iPad Pro finishes like literally one second before the 2017 iPad. So I'm impressed. Now handy features like split view, which allow you to run two apps side by side at the same time and control each one independently runs buttery smooth on the 2017 iPad. Now that iSight camera gives you full 1080p, 30 frames per second video capabilities. And it looks pretty good, I have to say. 
Uh, here's some still photos with that eight megapixel eyesight camera. I wouldn't use this as my primary camera, but it does well in a pinch, I'll tell you that. Now, the FaceTime camera leaves a lot to be desired. It's 1.2 megapixel, 720p max, not very impressive at all, but no surprise there. You do have Touch ID in tow. This is the first generation Touch ID, so it's not as fast as what you'll find on the iPhone 7, but it's comparable to other iPads. Now the new iPad is heavier at 469 grams versus 437 grams of the iPad Air 2. So there is a difference, not a huge difference, but a difference nonetheless. The chassis is basically comparable to the original iPad Air. But if you're coming from an iPad 2 or you're coming from an iPad Air, it's not gonna be a big deal. And if you've never had an iPad, you're not gonna know the difference either way. So the main people that won't like that are the people that already use the newer devices. And that's not who Apple is targeting with this iPad. Now that said, the thickness difference may be a little more discernible. You have 7.5 millimeters thick for this new iPad versus 6.1 millimeters for the iPad Air 2. And I did notice that immediately. But I could live with the size differences. The biggest downside about this iPad, in my opinion, is the lack of a fully laminated display. Because it lacks that fully laminated display, there is a noticeable air gap between the content on screen and the glass. So it doesn't feel like you're actually touching the icons like it does on the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Mini 4 or the iPad Pro series for that matter. It's hard to really appreciate it without seeing it for yourself side by side, but trust me, it makes the retina display seem a little less premium without that fully laminated property. Now this shot's a little weird. I have the sun coming in on the iPads here. I have the iPad Pro on the left and the new iPad on the right. And I wanted to show you the difference between the displays. The 2017 iPad lacks the anti-reflective coating as well. So not only does it lack that fully laminated display, but it lacks that anti-reflective coating, which makes it more difficult to see in bright conditions. As you, as you can see here, the same brightness settings here, but notice how it's a little more washed out on the 2017 iPad. So I actually have to crank up the brightness, which could have a negative effect on battery life overall, because you have to make it brighter in order to see in bright conditions. Now, speaking of battery life, it's super interesting. The iPad Air 2 has a 27.3 watt hour battery. The iPad Pro 27.5 watt hour battery, both rated for 10 hours approximately. The new iPad, 32.4 watt hour battery, yet still rated at 10 hours. So you have to wonder, does the screen brightness come into play there? Or is Apple just being really conservative? We're gonna test it out and let you know in the coming days. A few reminders, the new iPad is not compatible with the Apple Pencil, neither is it compatible with the Smart Connector. For the time being, these remain iPad Pro exclusive features. So folks, here's my verdict. At only $329, this is a great option for those upgrading from an iPad 2 or an iPad Air. And if you've never had an iPad before, this is the best time to get in the game. I think this will appeal a lot to new customers as well. This is a great first tablet that doesn't pull any punches when it comes to power. It has the power, it has the RAM, it has the storage space, 32 gigabytes entry level, and it also has must have features like Touch ID. But of course, if you desire the latest and greatest, or you're really into photography or videography, or you just like the pro features like the Apple Pencil or the smart keyboard, then obviously you wanna to look towards the iPad Pro now because that's the line where all the forward thinking features are gonna dwell. So ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. Would you consider buying the new iPad or would you recommend it? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.